trick-or-treat. Give me something like a football playoff game. Bill Huddleston along with head coach Rafe Watkins. Hey, it is the final week of the 2016 football season, and coach, after last Friday night's win over Sepulpa, Ruffers are playoff bound. Well, that's the thing that we, that was our first goal of the season, is to make sure we made the playoffs. And after we had some of our success in the district, we knew, we felt like we were there, but that solidified it Friday night with the win over at Sepulpa. And uh, win this week gives us a district championship. So that's, that's, you know, that's our next goal now is to be district champions and go on from there. But uh, it was a, you know, it wasn't the prettiest of wins. We didn't play very well in the first half. I thought it was kind of sloppy at times. Uh, especially defensively, we didn't play near like what we have been. Offensively, moved the ball pretty well. Had a couple of stupid offensive holding penalties that negated big plays. Uh, later on, had a, a hands to the face on our defense. Had three unnecessary penalties that I didn't care for. Not really what you'd call hustle penalties, just lazy penalties. Uh, but, you know, no turnovers. Uh, we scored at will in the first half, and in the second half played real well, I thought, all, all phases of the game. Uh, still the biggest stickler, and, is, uh, and, and that's getting fixed today as far as we're just going to have to put starters on it. We've tried to go with the kicking game. You know, We're placing the ball where we want. We have people around it, but we don't have people making tackles. And the two big returns gave them you know, 14 points the other night. And uh, like we said, if you, you know, if you get that ball up around midfield, the chances that other team scoring just goes up tremendously if you get them out past the 30. So we've got to do something on our kickoff game, which we're, going, like I said, going to start doing today and put more starters on it, and we'll go from there. Right for 7-1 now on the season, more importantly, just a scunch away from making the district championship title plaque hang inside the locker room at Muskogee High School. But, Coach, you talked about the offense. Scored a nine of your first ten possessions, and realistically probably should have been ten for ten. But overall, 517 yards, pretty much balanced. 290 through the air, 227 on the ground. Malaysia had another 100-yard game on 11 carries, 104 yards. Jacob Adrano, what a efficiency effort. 18 of 22, 250. And then Joe Combs, I mean, virtually unstoppable. Uh, Joe had a huge game the other night. Six catches for 173 yards and a touchdown, it seemed like. Uh, every time that Jacob, if, if you throw a jump ball to Joe, he's probably going to come down with it some way. It's not always high pointing it, but he'll juggle it and tip it to himself or somehow and come up with the play. Uh, yeah, he did. And you, as you've said about Jacob, he's done really well all year. I think he's sitting right now at 14 touchdowns with only one interception. Uh, that's pretty good. Anybody would take that in the big leagues or anywhere. So uh, really proud of him. Our line's doing a good job of keeping people and the pressure off of them. Of course, we throw a lot of short routes and stuff. Our, I thought the other night one thing that was better uh, that I had to brag on was our, and we worked on it a lot during that off week, is uh, perimeter blocking for our receivers. We didn't think we did a very good job against Sand Springs. We worked on that hard the off week and then even last week, and I feel like that our, our receivers did a much better job out on the perimeter blocking for each other. Well, certainly it was an impressive performance, and let's just go right to some of the highlights of last Friday night's ball game and coach starts right there with a guy that uh, has exploded on the scene and was just going to be good all night long. Um, Elijah, you know, again, he is a great running back. You know, he had a 10 yard touchdown there, has another one later on, but every one of our running backs got touchdowns. Here's a long pass. That's a great throw from uh, Jacob to, to Joe. Uh, you know, he just, he looks so smooth. Here's a little package we put in, just a wildcat package for really a Really like the way, the way Quintepin runs with the football. He runs, he's always got that lean, you know, and he's over 200 pounds and strong. Here's another one, here's Mo's second score. But every one of our receivers, you'll see Kyrie Beasley later, and you'll see Christian Hellman. All of them had touchdowns, and you'll even see old Jacob here get a touchdown in a minute. I think that cost Dad some money. That's another one of those just high point, flipped it to himself, and uh, they had enough people around to stop him, but Joe had just a tremendous night offensively. <clears throat> Here, there's just a zone read, and people so used to Jacob not pulling it that he was so wide open that he pulled it and walked in. Um, coming up, another, this is a great touch pass right here to Devin Hillman. Nobody is going to get it except that. him. No, the only person that's going to catch it is him. It's just a great throw. And here's Kyrie. Kyrie has really been playing hard in the JV games. Glad to see him. He ended up with 63 yards rushing on seven carries the other night. Had a really good night. And here's back to the Wildcat package. And again, he's, you know, he don't look like he's moving real fast, but he's so strong and his old arms, there his legs take up a, a long stride. And there was Christian getting his. Uh, this is the last play before we started nailing it. it was just going to try to get going. It goes over <laughs> our heads, but not the prettiest, but he's sitting down there. That's a strong arm. If you see him, he threw off his back foot unbalanced, and 
Uh, luckily, they stopped Speedy down there, and we were able to nail it, but was able to run out the, the clock. Well, certainly it was a total effort line. Like you said, the defense maybe wasn't where you wanted it the first half, but they showed up in the second, second half. half they played really well. Flex their muscles. They played much bit. better. They had a uh, Coach Hill and staff did a good job of getting them in places, and uh, they played a little bit with more uh, sense of urgency. Absolutely. We come back, we're going to set the stage for this week's final regular season game against the Wildcats of Ponca City and take a sneak peek toward the postseason. That's right, the Ruffers are playoff bound in 2016. We'll talk about all that after a quick timeout here on TV 15. Welcome back on TV 15. Bill Huddles along with Coach Rafe Watkins. And Coach, it was old school football last Friday night, but now is the time to lock the door and then keep an eye on the game between Bixby and Sand Springs because who wins determines whether the Ruffers will be district champions or if you'll still host the playoff game as the runner up of District 2. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the scenario. The bottom line is, is if uh, Sand Springs wins, uh, we're second place because they hold the head to head with us. Uh, Bixby wins and we win, we're district champions. Um, and really, the, we, we can't do worse than second, see, the worst. I mean, even if, if Bixby uh, gets beat by Sand Springs and we get beat by Ponca, we're still second. If Bixby wins and Ponca beats us, we're second. I mean, we've got a lot of scenarios in there, but the bottom line is, is we just, you know, we're going to get a first round uh, game at home and we've just got to go out and take care of business. I just want to go beat Ponca and look good doing it. And then whatever else happens over there, I'm not really concerned with. But, uh, you know, it looks like right now, if we win, we're going to play uh, either Choctaw, or not Choctaw, but uh, um, Putnam City West, which is who Choctaw plays. And Choctaw's hot right now. I really think they'll beat PC West and they'll get there. If PC West beats Choctaw, then we'll play Stillwater. And Stillwater plays Midwest City, so it really doesn't matter what happens there because Stillwater holds head to head with Choctaw. So if they somehow tie there, they'll get the four. So we'll, we're either going to play PC West or Choctaw if we're district champions. If for some reason we slip to second, then we're probably playing either PC West or Choctaw. Well, it's certainly nice to be talking confusing. about all those possible yeah. scenarios because it's been since 2010 since the playoffs were last part of rougher football vocabulary, and it's nice to have that. This Friday night, of course, is the final regular season home game, mm -hmm. and of course it's the final regular season home game for your seniors of 2016 and a pretty good group. It's a real good group. It's not as big as the last couple of years that we've had. You know, we've had around 25, 26 the last few years. I think we got 16 or 17 this year, um, not counting our trainers. And uh, just a good group of young men. They're the ones that, you know, you look back, they can say that they're the ones that got it turned back in the right direction. They got the playoffs. And, you know, if things go right, like I talked with them Saturday morning up there, I said, if you guys want to be um, in that state title game, it's very possible. And you don't have that come around too often, you know. Uh, I've been blessed to have four, and I felt like I had three teams that could have got there. And I consider this team one that can get there, certainly. And uh, in 25 years of coaching, to have this as just the eighth, you know how tough it is to get there. And I, I told the guys, guys, you just don't realize it right now, what a wonderful position you're in. And uh, can't look forward, but we got to keep working hard at practice and, and, and preparing and being you know, we had that deal, respect all but fear none. I don't know that we respected Sepulpa enough that the first half the other night we thought we'd just show up and win, and, and we should be over that. They've got to know that we've got to play hard every game, and that's what I'm looking for in this Ponca City game is coming and focusing in early and getting after it. Well, it should be an exciting Friday night. I want to remind you, game time is 7 o'clock at Muskogee Creek Nation Field. Senior night activities, all the other final regular season game things will be going on, and we'll be back to the traditional rougher TV after the old school audio only broadcast of last week. Now to be back to the video along with the audio, we hope you'll join us if for some reason you can't make it out to Creek Nation Field. But Coach, it's playoff bound. That's good news. That is good news, and we'll see, like I said, more on Friday who we play and uh, if we're district champions or not. Well, until then, for Head Coach Rafe Watkins, I'm Bill Huddleston. So long for now, and remember, it's always a great day to be a rougher.